Hi everyone, a hearty breakfast consisting of pickled herring, cured meats, crisp bread and black coffee here with rhyme signatures, the nerdiest music review this side of being one more reason why Norway is a top tier country who just understands what good food is. And today we're going to be doing a review of the new self-titled album from Sycophant. Is there anything more exhilarating than a group of young hopefuls releasing their thoughts and sentiments onto the unsuspecting world? I mean, okay, sure, you could argue that a winning lottery ticket, spending the night with Chris Hemsworth, or discovering that you have the ability to shoot bees from your eyes is a little bit more exciting. But let's be honest, a talented new band is far more likely of an occurrence than any of the above. Which... It's a real shame, because I reckon I could achieve a lot in my life if I could discharge bees at my enemies whenever I wanted to. But I digress. I adore new bands. I'm always more enthusiastic to listen to a new band than an existing one. Veterans are fine, but we're familiar with their ideas, their emotions and sentiments. New bands? Well, that is the unknown. The unexpected. You never know what's coming, what kind of guitar tone are we hearing, the vocal timbre, the compositions and songwriting, the lyrics, attitudes, themes, everything is a mystery. And it all adds to the excitement. Now sure, a lot of new bands are terrible, but let's be honest, if I started a band, you'd all be subjected to my endless bassy noodling, vocals that could shatter wine glasses, and lyrics that keep weirdly returning to the theme of why ducks are pretty amazing and why you should treat them nicely. Thankfully for all of us, I don't need to start a band, because Sycophant are here. And as far as debut offerings from new bands go, this is easily one of the best examples of this kind of music to be released in the 2020s so far. The monuments of old are withered with grime. Norway has a fantastic reputation for producing some of the best examples of current prog rock. Just look at bands like Wobbler, Motorcycle, Arabs and Aspic, Airbags, Seven Impale, and so on and so forth. And it brings me great pleasure to be able to call Sycophant the latest addition to this pantheon of perfection. Feeling very much classic rock in style, rather than a real homage to the progress of old, like Yes, Genesis, Gentle Giant, etc. etc. Sycophant have a lot more in common with their immediate contemporaries, such as Wobbler and Motorpsycho, with a smattering of the old-school sensibilities of bands like Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Rush, etc. etc., to create a sound that is simultaneously very nostalgic and warming, but manages to have its own distinct flair and intrigue. In a strange way, the band's arrival on the scene kind of reminded me a little bit of Orcrust from last year, a band wearing the influences on their sleeves that appears out of nowhere and leaves a huge lasting impression on me, but may rely too heavily on what they know rather than creating a sound that is truly their own. So, let's get to the good stuff. The album is quite well constructed, clocking in at just shy of an hour of music across six songs, indicating that you're in for some beautiful, lengthy, breathable stretches of music, which is exactly what we have here. Between Air and Water, Strangers and Forgotten Paths are the album's main courses, with the shorter pavement of colours and between the moments filling in the gaps, and Monuments of Old serving as a nice halfway house between them. I'm particularly fond of Sandra Horgan's bass work, as we're treated to a warm, enriching and thoroughly engaging riff from the moment the album begins, and spoilers here, I particularly like how the album ends on the same riff, creating a cyclical loop of music. It's a nice little touch, and not the only effective use of leitmotifs throughout the album, which honestly I am such a sucker for. It gives the record a sense of fantastic continuity and coherence in its music, making the album feel like a single unified piece, with passages called back to at appropriate interjections to make you reflect back and echo on the record's memorable moments that you'll move through over the course of its hour-long duration. Emil Moen's vocals are another standout for me, with a thick, gravelly tone that is both inviting and complex with a hint of urgency that works incredibly well with the context of the music. It's similar in some ways to Robert Plant or Richard Scherblom, but more baritone and sombre in ways that only the Norwegians can manage. But let's be honest, this album is all about the guitars, and founding members Emil Moen and Per Semb absolutely tear it up here. 
tossing in every trick and tone in the book, the whole album has a strong Pink Floydian vibe, with some real David Gilmour worship going on in the multiple extended guitar solos. But it's not only the lead stuff that struck a chord with me. The rhythm guitars are also impressive, putting in some hooky and engaging riffs with startling frequency. The first real sit-up-and-pay-attention moment came around the four-minute mark of Between Air and Water, with this simple, repeated line drawn out over the top of Melvin Trader's staccato percussion, building in intensity and mood for a good couple of minutes before the next layers are stacked on top and the song continued to grow as ideas were being thrown in left, right and centre. Or maybe we should be talking about uh, Monuments of Old Alex Lifeson-esque tonality, which feels like a track straight out of Hemispheres, A Farewell to Kings or Permanent Waves. Or maybe the Wild West fusion section of Strangers, which reminded me of some of the works of Hadal Sherpa. It's a totally unexpected pivot point, yet it stands out as one of the most memorable and entertaining moments on an album really packed full of them. Between the Moments is a dreamy, shorter-form composition, allowing both Emil's vocals to shine to their full potential, whilst also showcasing Sandre's excellent lower-end work for a song that feels plucked out of Led Zeppelin's golden era. But prog rock being prog rock, the band has of course saved the best track until last, with the longest song of Forgotten Paths closing things out in a suitably epic and climactic fashion. Starting off with some incredible acoustic work and heartfelt vocals, it's a real send-off of a song, encompassing the whole journey of the album up until this point, containing some of the most crucial touching points of the band's abilities, as well as, as previously mentioned, bringing back the opening bass riff of the album to close us out. Honestly, doing this was a strike of genius, and really gives us this feeling of circular finality. So, what isn't working as well for me. Well, your mileage may vary on this one, but the band for better or worse leans quite heavily on the greats of the past, with many moments sounding directly lifted from a greatest hits of classic rock, indicating to me that the band is very much finding their feet with what they consider to be truly theirs. I mean, I am prepared to forgive bands for this offence if the end result is as good as this one, but I can't overlook it when offering constructive feedback on the record. Strangers, the penultimate track, also has a really, really long ambient outro that I didn't particularly gel with. I just feel it goes on a little bit longer than I'm comfortable with, and it kind of slams the brakes on a little bit too hard for an album that has been flying along at a pretty breakneck rate up until this point. There's often maybe, I don't know, a little bit more noodling and jamming than I'd like, and I believe that with the outro of Strangers and a couple of guitar solos here and there, the band could probably trim 10 minutes off the running duration and fit this onto a single LP. Now, I don't mind the total runtime, I just think some of it could have been better spent or used more efficiently. But honestly, these are still pretty minor gripes in the long run, and they don't serve to massively detract from the overall experience. So, what else can I say about Sycophant's self-titled debut? I've had the rare pleasure of having access to this one for a few months now, so I've had plenty of time to digest it fully, which is a seldom sampled treat for little guys like me. The album comes out this Friday, 31st of May, and honestly I think this could really explode on the scene if given the chance. It's a well-constructed, beautiful sounding body of work that's been really ticking my classic rock boxes, but it also managed to sound at least a little bit like something new and exciting as well. No, it's not perfect, but what in this world is? My complaints are ultimately minor, and when all is said and done, I have been consistently excited to listen to this one. It's an effortlessly enjoyable album with a huge amount of sonic variety, all brilliantly executed, to make for an album that's about as accessible as this kind of music is ever going to get. I will very much be looking to get my hands on a physical copy of this one, guys, and I would urge you all to do similarly. This band has so much promise and potential ahead of it, and I want them to succeed, and I think you'll honestly love this one. This is all, of course, guys, just my opinion. So, when you get a chance to listen to this one, please let me know if you loved or hated it with the comments down below. Don't forget, releases this Friday. Do check it out. Please do drop me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Please do tell your friends about me. And please do throw me a subscription if you've been enjoying my content. But until next time, guys, as always, keep your rhyme signatures pretty odd.